Using templates and clones is the next lab from the series VMware 6.5, so let's begin. Hello friends, this is Nick and this is NLB and we continue with the next topic of configuring uh, VM templates and clones in VMware uh, version 6.5. So for the purpose of this video, I have my virtual lab environment up and running, which contains my domain controller, this is 01, which you can see right here, my storage server, and I'm going to use the storage server to host the iSCSI and NFS storages. And of course I have my VMware environment, which consists of uh, two ESXi hosts, alongside with my vCenter server and I'm going to use the NLB PC01 which contains an image of Windows 7 to create the template and work from, from it. The first task that we have at hand is to basically configure a virtual machine to a template. And uh, why do you need templates? Um, let's say from the practical standpoint of view, templates are really handy when you need to deploy new virtual machines. And um, you don't have to any time to create a new virtual machine and then attach an ISO image to it and then install the operating system. And for example, think that you need to deploy 10 servers at uh, the same time. So uh, this is going to be very time consuming if you are uh, the installing type of administrator, it's going to be okay uh, if you like to install operating systems, but uh, yeah, for other purposes, maybe for example, the manager needs uh, the virtual machines to be up and running in, in one hour, and you'll need to have a faster way to, for you to do this. So, template is the way for you to go, just cloning the templates and uh, basically deploying virtual machines from the templates, which is going to fast things quite a bit. So I'm going to go to my VMs and templates right there you can see and I have two folders that I've pre-created and uh, you can create uh, folders as well by using the new folder and uh, new VM and template folder. Uh, after that I'll need to use one of my virtual machines that uh, I've already installed an operating system to it to convert it to a template. So I can achieve that by right clicking on to the virtual machine and go to the template and convert to template. So I'm going to convert this virtual machine to a template and uh, basically it will stop being a virtual machine that you can power on. Instead, it becomes a template that you can use to deploy other virtual machines and create. So now that we have the uh, template at hand, I'm just going to make things more clean and I'm going to move this uh, virtual uh, template to my templates folder. So click OK. And after a few seconds, I will see that uh, now under templates, I have my NLVPC01. Of course, to make things uh, easier, what you can do is you can name your templates with the version of the operating system or you can uh, check the guest, guest OS within the actual template. But instead of using a normal uh, naming convention for a virtual machine, uh, you can do what you can do, for example, is you can use uh, Microsoft Windows 7, 64-bit uh, uh, Ultimate, for example, or Windows Server 2012 Ultimate 64-bit or something like that. So now that I have the template, I'm just going to rename that so we can make things easier, like I said. And uh, let me try to copy something so I can write in, in the window. Okay, so I'm going to name this, for example, uh, Win7 64 ulti template. So when I rename this template, I will know that uh, I have the uh, right um, operating system that I want to select and deploy a virtual machine from. The other thing that we need to concentrate after we have our template in hand is to um, create a 
custom specifications file, which is going to prepare the deployed or the cloned uh, virtual machine from the template. And um, what do we mean by this is uh, when you clone the actual uh, or deploy the actual virtual machine from a template, the virtual machine will be uh, with the same settings as the original uh, template file. And uh, if you are more familiar with Windows operating system, um, when you clone virtual machines, basically they will be the same virtual machines. So you will face some problems cloning virtual machines without uh, sys prepping them, let's say. And for example, you won't be able to join them to the domain because they will be detected as uh, the same virtual machine or what is going to pre prevent you is the cloned or the same uh, security identifiers or SITs. So uh, VMware, instead of, uh, you have two options, of course, you can always sysprep the virtual machine within uh, the Windows operating system before, uh, after cloning it, or you can use a uh, custom file, customization file uh, that uh, you can, when you clone the uh, server or the um, virtual machine in general, you can use this customization file to add additional things to uh, the virtual machines. Uh, so we'll have to go to the policies and profiles from the home menu and in here we'll be uh, presented with the option to create a new customization uh, specification file. So the first option that we can see is the target VM operating system. Of course, you have Windows or Linux in here. I'm going to use the Windows one. Uh, you can use a custom sysprep answer file if you want. Uh, the custom sysprep answer file will contain all the information for the virtual machine so it can sysprep and prepare everything for you. But instead, I'm going to use the VMware way. And uh, the next one is the name of the template. So I'm going to add Win seven let's say prep so i'm going to leave it that way and click next the next thing is the organization so um, yeah i'm just going to leave the um, organization without anything or it's not going to give me so let's try to add for example um nick and nlb solutions okay so the next thing is I can change the actual uh, virtual machine name uh, from uh, the um, customization file so for example uh, when I clone the virtual machine after the uh, and while this is prep operation is going uh, it will change the name automatically for me so uh, what you can do in here you have different options you can select a, a default name which I don't think is going to be the best way to proceed or uh, you can uh, use the virtual machine name um, or uh, you can enter the name of the uh, while in the clone deploy wizard which I think it's going to suit uh, a bit better while you're deploying virtual machines in general so I'm going to select the last option to enter the uh, the name. The next uh, thing is to add the product key. So um, the wizard can automatically activate the windows for you so it can be ready to go. But uh, yeah, I don't have a product key. So uh, I'm just going to leave that blank for now. The next thing is to provide the administrator password for the uh, admin account. So I'm going to add this one as well. Of course, they oh they match. So I'm going to click next. It will ask me to provide a time zone. So let's say a normal uh, US Pacific time. You can run or you can execute any commands. Um, the first time you can see the first time the user logs on if you prefer any commands to be executed for example to uh, disable the admin account create a new user a local user add it add, add this user to the local administrators or anything else you can add this in here but i'm going to click next you can see that uh, i can configure the actual um, network settings so uh, yeah uh, it's going to ask me 
what is the uh, NIC description and if I want to configure uh, the NIC to use DHCP or to use any static settings I'm just going to um, select the default which is use the standard network settings for the guest operating system including enabling DHCP on all network interfaces and the next one is we can join the uh, virtual machine to the domain if preferred uh, or we can leave it in a work group uh, in here we'll be we'll have to if you select to join to the domain we'll have to provide the domain information and uh, credentials that have the access to join to the domain and this is the important window where I think it's going to be uh, the most important from the above so this is where you will say that you need this virtual machine to be generalized or what this means is it's going to create a new security ID or SID um, which will make this uh, virtual machine a unique virtual machine. So this is the, the, the way to go. Uh, we don't want to make the same clones and the final window will show all the settings. So if I click finish, I will have, um, in few seconds, I should have my Windows 7 prep uh, preparation file. Now that we have our template ready and our customization file, what we can do is we can deploy our first uh, virtual machine from a template. And what you can do is switch to the VMs and templates, right click on the template and uh, select the new VM from this template wizard. So in here we'll have to select the name of the virtual machine which I'm going to name NLB if I can write of course. Always the same bug. So NLB PC02 let's say. Select the uh, data center location. Select the uh, compute resource. And I'm going to select my host one. The checks completed, the storage, I'm going to select the uh, date store 01 to store the files and uh, I'm going to select the uh, team provisioning method to prov provision the, the, the actual disks. So let me see uh, if I select team provision so I just don't run out of space. I can click next and you can see that uh, I have the option to uh, customize the operating system and uh, this is what uh, I'm going to select. So um, in here we'll have to select the actual template that we've used this way while the machine is um, booting up for the first time it will launch the uh, the actual um, preparation file and now it asks me for the NetBIOS name oh. and it'll be PC02 so um, you can see right here that uh, we've selected to ask me for a, a name of the virtual machine so Yep, this is the information. It's going to uh, customize uh, the virtual machine with this prep file and I, if I click finish, it should start uh, cloning the template and it should uh, create the virtual machine in a few seconds. Let's see if this will happen fast or... Yeah, let me, let me pause and I'll continue when this is complete. Now I have uh, completely cloned the virtual machine and you can see it right here. It's not powered on at the moment and this is what we are going to do next. But first I just want to mention something that I did while cloning the virtual machine and what you don't want to do most probably in your production environment if you are watching this. And this is using the uh, TIN uh, method of provisioning the disks. Um, I use TIN provisioning because I am using an SSD storage and my storage is limited to the capacity that you can see right here and uh, in order for me to save space I've used uh, and I'm still using team provisioning on all the virtual machines but if you're doing this in production uh, the fixed size would be preferred method uh, because it's really not a good idea to well let's say that it can um, 
take from your uh, performance on your servers when uh, you're using team provisioning it's not much but if you're using SQL for example it can be uh, quite a bit so now that I have my um, PC02 virtual machines a uh, virtual machine I'm just going to launch the remote console if that starts of course yep there it is and I'm going to power on the virtual machine uh, in a bit so we can uh, see what exactly is the actual process. Uh, so what I do expect from the virtual machine is to start uh, and boot up normally um, and you will see the Windows uh, 7 login screen and then after a few seconds, after a minute or two, it should uh, automatically restart by itself and then it should uh, start preparing the windows uh, for first use once again and this is where you will see that uh, actually the sysprep configuration has been um, enabled and run on, on the virtual machine so when I clone a server as well I just watch to see if uh, the actual customization file will execute so I can be sure that uh, the the, s the server will be prepared, sysprepped and uh, good to go into production.